afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, David and I are shooting some videos. Yep. I, I'm going to interview him about his position and what he does here. Okay, this should be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Haley, let's go. All right, so what do you do here at Intelligent Concrete? I'm the principal engineer here. Okay. Uh, which means I'm the engineer of record. Okay. So everything we do that needs to be stamped, stamped or certified, um, it's all under my name. Is that so, a lot of pressure? It can be. Yeah. It can be. But, you know, that's what your training and your experience and what your career is about is exactly. raising that level. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so that's, that's basically what I do here. Stuff, um, I do, do some design. We design equipment mm -hmm. here. Um, check data, that's the certification part. Um, do some miscellaneous, this, this yeah. and that. I mean, we're a small business, so... Everybody you're, wears a lot of hats. You're the social media person, but I see you stripping cylinders and yep. all kinds of stuff. So yeah, so I do this and that when, when needed. So mm -hmm. that's pretty much what I do here. A little, bit yeah. of, a little bit of everything and a lot of the certification and meeting standards and um, being on record for having their, doing the right thing. Yeah. yeah, so you're the rules guy. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately I am. Yeah. Hey, you have to have them. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately that's true. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm the rules guy. That's yeah. good, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, you also write lots of grants? Yeah, we've been writing a lot of grants lately. We've written a lot in the past. Um, grants are kind of a strange animal. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're going forward to somebody and say, hey, um, give me a pile of free money. And uh, so, you know, you have to be pretty convincing. Yeah, so what does that process entail? Well, conceptually, it's um, you got to find a problem, a fairly unique problem, mm -hmm. especially for us. I mean, we're not a big company, so it has to be something that we can easily handle, but we might be the only one that can handle, yeah. even though we're a small company. So that makes it a little bit challenging. So you've got to find a problem, a fairly unique problem that we can solve, and then we've got to write how we're going to solve it, mm -hmm. what we're going to do to solve it, um, what we're going to end up when, when we get done. Yeah. Um, most of the grants want, I mean, they want some kind of end product. Sometimes it's a report, but most times it's something tangible. Okay. So, um, like the ones we're working on right now with the Air Force, they want something that will be sold. Mm -hmm. um, they want a product. Yeah. So they don't just, just want a lot of... Uh, wonderful ideas and yeah. brainstorming and whiteboarding that's that's not really the end product that yeah. they're after it's not not really pure research mm -hmm. it's very applied research yeah that's awesome though. yeah that's pretty cool yeah hopefully it'll be helpful to them and yeah that's what we do here yeah of course it is <laughs> yeah. you also do lots of astms astm well i wouldn't say i do lots of astms we're doing a ASTM. astm but it takes here. a lot of time oh my goodness yes you're right about that so we are providing the um, staffing, which is really the leadership, mm -hmm. for writing the new uh, chloral silica and concrete oh, a ASTM. And um, the process is similar, so the question was well formulated that you've got to find something that's needed, mm -hmm. you know, some product, some specification is needed. Uh, to be a leader on it, you've got to be the leader. You've got yeah. to kind of be the people that know the most about it. and. Um, and so that's where you start, and so you go, ASTM is a very formal process. Mm -hmm. um, you submit a suggestion for a specification. It's adjudicated to see if, it, okay. if it's actually needed. And then you form a, you are assigned to an ASTM committee. There's a huge oh, yeah. structure in ASTM. So CO9, the ASTM CO9 is, um, Cementitious materials. Okay. So you're assigned to cementitious materials, and then you're assigned to subtask group six, which is emerging materials. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, and then you're from there you form a small working group of industry folks that you know pretty much know. Well, in our case, how it's manufactured, how it's mixed and made into a product, and how it's used okay. in the field as a product. So we're trying to write the specification to cover that scope, those three levels. And that's caused us some problems. A lot of people are like, just tell us how to use it. Tell us, yeah. you know, we just want to put it in the truck and use it. Just just tell us that. Which I understand, but I think it's so important to have a background. Yeah, that's kind of where we are. It's it's funneling down the um, okay, yeah. part, 
parts of it are getting smaller, um, you know, because the, um, the ready mix people, they're like, we really don't need to know all that, you know, mm -hmm. we don't care, we just, and that's not negative towards them. I mean, yeah, of course. They have a job to do. Yeah. They say, just tell us how to use it, tell us what the advantages are and how to use it, mm -hmm. and that's all we need to know. So it's an interesting process, Very can be very frustrating. Yeah. It can be very tedious. Yeah. I just um, last night submitted um, final 5.0 <laughs> for for ballot three. Wow. I keep sending it in, and um, a couple oh, people man. send it back to me and say, you know, you're going to get a hundred comments on this one thing. So why don't you fix it before you send yeah. it out to ballot? I'm like, boy. I really appreciate that. Yeah, you know, that's super nice. You but know, it saves you a lot of time and helps speed things along. But on the other hand, when you just want to get that ballot out, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, but you know, people that have done this a lot and know more about it and understand the system and kind of understand how the balloting system works, I mean, that's invaluable. It, yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely invaluable. So. So would you say you're kind of like on the lower tier of knowing? the whole process of ASTM? Absolutely. Or, I yeah. think that's completely fair. I'm kind of a newbie. That's awesome though that you're kind of getting trained yeah. in the process by... Yeah, I mean we use ASTMs here every day. Yeah, of course. I mean we pull them off the shelf. We use C78 for split, you know, for flex and 39 for compression and we reread the specifications every so often to make sure we're following them correctly. So we know that end of it. We know yeah. the user end of it. But the... Um, the production end of it is, yeah, I'm pretty new at that. I worked in the federal government 38 years, and yeah. uh, for a while I was in the policy group, and we wrote national mm -hmm. standards. Oh, wow. And um, but that was very different. That was very different. You put them out for public comment, and you got mm -hmm. hundreds, um, maybe thousands of comments. But your group, you didn't have to send it out and redo it and send it out and redo it, send it out and redo it. You adjudicated the comments sent them forward and then published them out as the okay. as guidelines and standards. So That sounds a, like a better way to do it, maybe? It's much more efficient time-wise. Yeah. Is that, <laughs> do you think that's a possibility for ASTM? No. Yeah. No, that'll never happen. Yeah. No, I think, um, you know, in defense of ASTM, I mean, they're international standards, and yeah. once they're published, everybody in the world uses them, so... And if you say one wrong thing, or... Yeah, so it's pretty important stuff. Yeah. It's just... I think there could be a more expeditious, I mean, when you start it, they say, well, this is probably going to take five years. Um, you know, it's, the way, the rate I'm going on this, it's going to be at least a decade. Wow. Yeah. That is crazy. Because a ballot is essentially a draft. Yeah. So you get maybe a couple drafts a year. So if you're going to need ten drafts, that's yeah. five years. So. Really makes you appreciate the standards, <laughs> man. Yeah, they're called wow. standards for a reason. So. Yeah, no kidding. All right, a few more questions. Okay. What do you think is the greatest reward in writing grants, ASTMs, being the principal engineer? Well, I always like to think of myself as a problem solver. Mm -hmm. So what I like, what is most rewarding to me is to say, hey, we need a new piece of equipment and it needs to meet the standard. Mm -hmm. So you sit down and you puzzle over it and figure out you need this piece of equipment and that, you need this monitoring system, you need you know, humidifiers or dryers or heaters. Or, Fans or random things, yeah. You know, you understand this. You just designed the, uh, you designed our wildfire uh -huh. experiments. You understand yeah. that sort of, think of something, try it, might not work, try something else. Yep. So, but I find that very rewarding. I, yeah. I, you know, the problem solving part of it is, I think, my favorite part Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. And what about your biggest challenge? Biggest challenge? Um, right now, I'm FBA STM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a tough process. Okay. Um, I guess, you know, over the years, you know, I worked in the federal government for a long time, and I guess, you know, I, well, I think the biggest challenge is, is making it right, making it safe. Mm -hmm. You know, civil engineers, it comes from the Latin of civics for the people. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and that's what I like about it. That's, yeah. that's what, I, what I find the biggest challenge is it's not like a homework problem. You don't get 7 out of 10. Yeah. You know, you don't get a B. 
Yeah, you're putting people's lives you're at putting, risk. In many cases, you're putting people's lives at risk, and it has to be right. Mm -hmm. And so here, we're really good about that. We have a checking process that one person isn't involved at all. They don't look at it. They don't see it. They're not involved in any decisions, any design. And when the design is done, then they look at it. I like that. So yeah. it gives it that fresh look. And that's part of what I do as principal engineer. A lot of things mm -hmm. uh, I'm not involved in on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm held aside from it. And it, come, it gets tossed over the wall onto my desk. And there's the first time I've seen yeah. it with a fresh eye. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's the biggest challenge is getting it right every time, first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard. A lot of pressure. But a lot of pressure, yeah. But that's okay. I mean, that's what we do. That's what the job is. Yep. That's what going to school is about, and learning the skills, that's what the, that's what the job is. Mm -hmm. So I, I like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so any closing remarks or tips on people who want to be a principal engineer? Well, you know, I've had a, I used to, at work at the fit when I was in the federal government, we used to have kids come to work day. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. and so a lot of times I talk to the eighth graders and you know and whatnot, and they would ask, well, why did you become an engineer? I said, well, you know, when I was a kid, I had a Rector set, you know, and I, uh -huh. and I really liked it. That's my favorite toy, and so just almost by luck, I wound up as a structural engineer. Uh -huh. Just kind of found my path through the years. So. I think any job, uh, you got, you really got to love it. Mm -hmm. You know, you really got to be dedicated to it. You, as I said earlier, it's just not, you just can't do it halfway. Yeah. It's all or nothing. Absolutely. It's all or nothing. So, you know, for anyone wanting to become an engineer, I'd say if you're a good problem solver, you know, you're, you're good at working your way through things, you've got a lot of stick to you're not discouraged, you don't, you know, give up, you yeah, know, you just stay stay at it, determination. So, you know, if those are the kinds of things that you like to do, then yeah, I'd, I'd definitely become an engineer. It's a very rewarding profession, um, pays pretty well. Yeah, yeah. It's not particularly hard work. Yeah, just a lot of pressure, but... Yeah, it's, it's different that way. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, there's some pressure, but it's, a, it's very rewarding. So yeah, my tip would be, um, you know, if you want to solve very difficult problems and just do it just you know get them done and uh, i used to tell my students um when i was teaching i said you know when i was on the job there'd be an easy problem there'd be a hard problem so oh, this is easy i'll solve this so i left all the hard problems for you <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. And so there's some hard problems out there yep. there's some challenging problems you wanting to work in sustainability that's not an easy issue mm -hmm. that's a tough one yeah. Very complex issue, how you do that, but that's the beauty and the fun of it. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah, you gotta find your passion. Yep. All right. Well, thanks, David. You bet, Haley. Yeah, thanks. this is awesome. We'll it, see you next time. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment down below with any concrete questions or concrete concerns. Go concrete. Uh, beat asphalt. <laughs>